Hello there, everyone. Yes, everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, hobos and tramps, cross-eyed mosquitoes and bow-legged ants. On this new and exciting video, I'll be showing you how I made this interesting little knife. With a blade length of only 3 inches, and an overall height of 8 and a quarter inches, I assure you ladies that it can get the job done any time of day. <laughs> I started off with a set of rusted pruning loppers that were being thrown out by some recycle of phobic nut job at the local transfer station. Then using a party noise maker with a socket at the end, I took off the nut and lock washer, allowing me to separate the two halves that made up the jaws of life. Throwing the hooked end behind me with little regard for any poor passerby who dares to peek into my shop. I get busy clamping and cutting off the aluminum handle that is holding onto the steel like an alligator preparing for a death roll. After a bit of cleverly placed cuts, I was able to pry off the aluminum handle and obtain the rusty piece of hardened steel that was once used to lop off small branches and bushes. Now that I have the piece I desire, I clamped it down to the table and took a wire brush to it. The brush I am using screws onto my angle grinder and allows really quick removal of rust in previous coatings. The clippers had two little stubs on them that prevented the user from slamming their knuckles together when using the original tool. I rolled out the handy dandy belt sander and evened out the part that was bent inward. This will give me a nice flat plane on the bottom to work with. Once that was done, I continued to clean up the outer edges of the knife for the sander. I want this knife to look as purdy as I can, so I'm really taking my time to make it look nice. It's now time to tackle the handle portion of this build. Any of you who saw my previous clipper knife will know that I just sandwiched the steel in between two pieces of pallet wood and shaped it from there. This time, I'm going to mark the outline of the steel and chisel out the wood. This way, the two scales will wrap around the tang completely and give me a different look. This method will also allow me to create a handle that is much wider and thicker, therefore better suited for my meaty hands. This is my very first time trying to hand chisel something, so it probably took me much longer than it would take someone who was experienced, but I learned very quickly that taking your time was key. Like I said, this is my first and only time ever chiseling out something by hand, so unfortunately I can't give you a good tutorial. If only there was a website where you could find this information. Hmm. Once I was happy with how the steel fit into the handle slots, I cut off one of the corners to make sure I left the little stub I sanded down earlier exposed. I wanted that to be my thumb rest and didn't want to try removing all that material once the halves were glued together. So this was the simplest method I could come up with. I then clamp down the steel again and put some neat little tally marks in the tang. This will ensure that the epoxy has a good surface to hold on to, just like Jack and Rose from the Titanic movie. Before I attach the handle, I want to make sure that my initial bevels are established. So again, I turn to my Suzuki belt sander and grind away, making smooth, level passes. Now that the bevels are as established as the patriarchy, I attach the handle and start the shaping process. To keep the handle secured to the blade, I use an epoxy called Scotch Weld 620. This is a two-part epoxy that needs to be mixed together really well to ensure that it hardens evenly. To keep the outer edges of the handle together, I use normal wood glue. The epoxy will take the longest to harden, eh, just around 4 hours, so I clamped everything in my ultra industrial sized vise and let the epoxy cure. I'm not sure what it is curing, but I hope whatever it cures isn't something contagious. Now that everything is cured, I move the clamps and reposition the knife in the vise. I then take a different styled wire brush attachment from my angle grinder and go to town on this bad boy. The wire brush makes insanely fast work of the wood and I have to be very careful that I don't take off too much or go too quickly and make a mistake. This will allow me to get the general shape that I'm looking for before Halloween rolls around and without wearing through all of my sanding belts. Once the handle tells me that it's liking the way it looks after going on a diet, I put down the angle grinder and take that beautiful piece of wood back over to my belt sander and start smoothing down rogue gouge marks left behind by the wire wheel. 
This now allows me to make a few more adjustments to the shape without having to worry about taking too much material off too fast. Once that is accomplished, I take some files to it, finalizing the shape once more, and then I finally I pass over the whole thing with some hand sanding. Now let me stop right here and explain something. This wood filler is a great idea if you're going to paint the handle. However, I'm planning to stain the handle because I want to keep the look that the oriented strand board gives me. So I should have used a wood filler that is the same color as the wood. But let's assume that you want to paint your handle. That way, you can use any wood filler you would like. After filling in all the voids, it's time to give it one more hand sanding and move right along to staining the wood like it was a white t-shirt. I'm using Royal Walnut Stain because it emphasizes the grain structure of the OSB while keeping a relatively light color to the wood. I'm only using one coat because I want a lighter color scheme for this blade. Once the stain dries, we're all set and ready to sharpen the edge. The Art of Weaponry already showed off how to easily sharpen the knife edge using MDF wheel and jewelry rouge. So I'm going to use that exact same method to sharpen my blade, be sure to check out his video to see how it was done. This edge is now sharper and will cut deeper than any bitter YouTube comment. I like how this blade came out, the handle reminds me of a pistol grip and the overall design is something I've never seen before. So that finishes up this little project and I had a blast building it. I hope you enjoyed it and I would love to see your take on a clipper knife. Be sure to leave a thumbs up and make sure to click extra hard on that subscriber button so you always catch the latest builds from me. This has been The Workshop and I hope to see you in the next video. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.